Good morning. It's only eight of y'all. Come closer. Come on. <laughs> this is the congregation song. If you'd like to stand and sing along with us, please do. When you're down and troubled and you need some loving care and nothing, nothing is going right. Close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You just call out my name, and you know. Good morning, everyone. How are you? I would like to start off by saying Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and everyone who has a father. Happy Father's Day. Let's hold our divine fathers in esteem and honor this morning as we uh, get ready to celebrate here. We want to welcome everybody for being here. We want to welcome everybody online. If you're joining us online on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for taking time and part of your morning here to spend with us. We're going to have a really good time today. We're going to talk about fathers. We're going to talk about mothers. We're going to talk about penguins. They all kind of go together, right? So we're going to have a great time. So uh, if you are here with us for the first time this morning, we would like to take a moment to uh, honor you and thank you for uh, joining us here uh, this morning. Uh, Unity is a place where all are accepted exactly where you are on your walk. We meet you right where you are and help you to grow and transform yourself. So we want to welcome you if this is your first time here uh, this morning. And uh, if you need more information uh, about Unity, Unity Church of the Hills, there's some stuff out there in the, in the foyer that you can pick up and take home with you. And uh, we also have some ambassadors around here and lots of folks uh, willing to help you out with uh, any questions you may have. So uh, be looking for someone with a badge and they'll get you directed to someone who can help you. Mostly we just want you to have a great time here this morning and we thank you again for being with us. And with that, I think I'm going to bring up our next section. I think Shonda's going to be bringing up some announcements for us. Or we got a, we got a little something before then? For opening prayer. Yeah, here we go. Come on. Have you 
feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. And let us turn our attention towards the one true power in this universe, God the good. As we focus on the good of God, we have assurance for this day and all its needs. In the blessing of what we have today, let us prepare the way for tomorrow's good. We live hopefully and give generously, noticing all the good along the way. We do not worry about what we do not yet have or cannot yet see, because our assurance is in divine abundance, the good of God now and in every moment. We are grateful for our blessed abundance <clears throat> and our faith that lights our way and connects us to the one true light, love, and power in this universe. As we praise God with music and listen to the talk, may we know that our minds cannot be limited, our hearts cannot be separate. May we only know the wholeness of being and claim nothing less than the fullness of life. And as we lift our hearts in gratitude and praise, we say, here we are, Mother, Father, God, ready to serve and allow the Christ within us to transform our lives. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. So this week is the week for uh, our kids' camp. It's going to begin on Tuesday, the 21st, and go through June uh, the uh, 24th, so Tuesday through Friday. Um, it uh, will be able to keep our kids engaged in this active summer, uh, wonderful summer camp. Um, visit unityhills.org to register for choir, summer choir camp. I'm sorry, you guys. I am just losing my mind. Let me start all over. Tuesday through Friday, June 21st through 24th, uh, and Sunday, June 26th. Keep your kids engaged and active this summer. Visit unityhills.org to register for Kids Choir Camp. This camp is for children aged six, uh, 6 to 12 years old and will be held at Unity Oaks Tuesday through Friday from 9 o'clock to 12 p.m. Campers will be coached on all the essentials of singing and will perform two songs during the 1125 service on Sunday the 26th. If all I just had followed the script, it would have been great. Um, volunteer leadership training on Saturday, June 25th from 9 to 12 noon. In Friendship Hall, our education team has been hard at work developing a training for all our volunteers to help raise the bar for a volunteer ministry. This training will introduce a new paradigm for volunteering and empower everyone to rise to a new level. This training will be interactive, engaging, and memorable. Please join us. Visit unityhills.org and click the events tab to register. If you're gonna, if you would like to, please join me. We're gonna have our our statement, our vision statement, please join me. We are an ever-expanding community of love and acceptance where lives are transformed. Good morning. Okay, y'all are really quiet, so we're going to liven this up a little bit, okay? Everywhere I go, I take my Jesus with me. Everywhere I go, I take my Jesus with me. Everywhere I am, I know he's right there with me. That's why I'm still winning every time you see me. I got the V I C T O R Y. I got no reason to fear. I got Jesus on my side. I got that. Hey. I got that. Visa. I got that. Hey. I got that. Visa. I got that. V I C T O R Y. Jesus on my side, I got that. Hey, I got that. Visa, I got that. Hey, I got that. Visa. Everybody's asking why you always laughing when there is no reason to smile. smile. Everybody's saying, why do you keep praying? Things ain't changed for you in quite a while. Then I think of all the stuff I had to go through just so I could be here today. My Lord. It always reminds me. Blessings on the, the blessings way. on the way. Hey, they said it wasn't gonna make it. Hey, they said it wouldn't be done. No, no, but every time 
they see me, they say there go that one. I don't take no credit from where my help comes from. I just look up to the hills and I praise it to the sun. I got that I C T O R Y. I got no reason to fear. I got Jesus on my side. I got that. Celebration, yeah, always. I've said this before and I'll say it every time I'm here. It's always a blessing to be speaking on Sunday when celebration is in the house. It's always a highlight of the day. So as we get started today, uh, let's just start off right at the top. Let's just uh, hold all the fathers in honor and esteem gratitude. Uh, just if you, if you are a father, if you want to be a father, if you have a father, that includes pretty much all of us. Uh, let's just hold them in there. It's, uh, it's their day. We're going to be talking about fathers today and, in spe and specifically like, you know, the divine father principle, the idea of that divine father. And we're also going to be talking about the divine mother as well because it's intended to be a partnership. And as I alluded to in the uh, opening, we're also going to be talking about penguins. So uh, we're going to be having a really, really good show here for you today. So how I want to start this off this morning, I was, um, I was as I was preparing for this, I, mean, I want to take the time also to thank Reverend Cherie for asking me to, to speak today, not just to substitute for her, but this, the whole process of planning to be here today over the last month and in anticipating this, it's given me cause to really allow that father principle into my consciousness and what, what I was going to say today. And to tell you the truth, I have no idea what I'm going to say today. Uh, you, you do your homework and then you, you hope just to open yourself up to spirit when it comes time to speak and allow whatever needs to come through and trust that what comes through is in right and perfect order. And uh, it's a, it's, this is a good topic here because uh, 
in our current circumstances in the world, there seems to be some division and conflict and everything, you know, with fathers, with fathers and mothers and everything. And there seems to be division in a lot of areas and not just in the father mother dynamic, but division and everything. But I want to remind myself and remind each one of you that even in spite of the appearances of division, that we are still within the oneness that the, these, these little incidents that we perceive as being uh, separatist for us, keeping us separate from other folks, other tribes, other whatever the case may be, that those are actually an illusion. We are in the oneness. And I was reminded this week on a, on a walk with uh, Frank and Neil and Bob Withrow, we were talking about this, and we happened on the idea of that the, you know, the oneness is what it is. It exists whether I see it or not, whether I'm engaged with it or not, whether I'm cultivating that sense of oneness in my consciousness. So the oneness is. But the oneness is incomplete until I also choose that oneness and I join my will, I join my energy, I join my spirit to the oneness that already exists. Then that oneness shines a little brighter. So each one of us that are holding, trying to hold ourselves out from the oneness and everything, the oneness just keeps on going. It, 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 it just keeps on going. We're the ones that are shortchanging ourselves by keeping ourselves seemingly separate from it because in reality, capital R reality, we can never be separate from it. We can take our eyes off the ball maybe, but we're still in the oneness even as we take our eyes off the ball. And this has to do also with the father-mother principle as well. I know there's all kinds of experiences that people have with fathers and mothers. Some good, some bad, some indifferent, right? It just it runs the range of things. And as, as Scripture reminds us from time to time is that we all fall short of the glory. Nobody is doing this perfectly. No father has ever made every perfect move. God knows I have a lot of shortfalls and in that department along the way, things that you wish you would have said, things that you wish you wouldn't have said, right? Y'all had those moments and everything. Times of action when you took action, when maybe inaction might have been the appropriate thing. So that we're always kind of falling short of what that goal is. But the one thing that I was reminded of with, with respect to the Father Principle and everything is that in divine mind, in the realm of divine ideas where the, where the divine idea of Father exists in potential that it's perfect it's perfect that there is a path that we can walk in that demonstration and even if we fall short of it if our eye if our eye is firmly set on the target of what the potential for that is then we can almost never go wrong we can almost never go wrong um you know i have my own experience with uh with fathers i had a father who i love very much but who you know, didn't, certainly didn't meet my expectations, right? And I dare say he probably didn't meet his own expectations as well. I was also blessed with a stepfather that sort of, you know, moderated those extremes and everything. And I got a very grounded experience uh, via my stepfather. So I kind of almost had the best of both worlds in a, in a certain way, that I had that full range of potentials of what that father principle was demonstrated for me in my own life and so forth. But it was still up to me to sort through that, make up my own mind about what I thought about that and how I was going to behave around that, right? Uh, and quite frankly, it wasn't until I was probably in my 40s when I began to actually get a correct understanding of what the, the father principle really, really meant. And I found a way to I didn't really have much, much issue with my stepfather, so I didn't really have a bunch of forgiveness work to do with my stepfather. He, he did a really, really great job. He was a great stepdad. Uh, but I had a lot of work to do around my own father to get to that place of forgiveness, to allow his life to be exactly as it was that he didn't need to do or undo anything that he did or didn't do along the way to make my life better. I allowed it to just simply be what it was, and it was his path. And I found, finally, ultimately found that way to honor that. Uh, that resulted actually in a song called Strawberry Moon, which was the title track to my second record, which was a big healing experience writing that song. 
and recording that song later and everything, it was a big part of my process of forgiving and getting ultimately to that place of peace where I didn't need to fix anything about what my father did or didn't do. And many of you may, all, may also have your own similar kinds of stories and so forth in your own relationship with your own dads and everything. And once again, we all fall short of the glory, right? Dads are going to fall short. Children are going to fall short. Mothers are going to fall short. But if we have our eye on the ball about striving towards that divine principle of what it is in perfection, then we almost can never go wrong. And there's certainly nothing that we can do that we can't course correct with the right choices. So I want to uh, start off, uh, before we get to the penguins, I want to uh, start off by just reading a few uh, uh, scripture pieces. There's a couple from Genesis and a couple from John that I'm just going to kind of seed into the, the conversation for us to think about as we're moving through this. So the first one comes from Genesis, Genesis 1.27, and, and this is a well-known one. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And the second one is almost like that. It's Genesis 5, uh, verses 1 and 2. When God created humankind, he made them in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them and named them humankind when they were created. Now, there are many, many different interpretations of, of these scriptures and everything. I am happen to be using the New Revised Standard Version, which is sort of what we use in, the, in Unity schools and everything as our, as our source. But there's many, many different interpretations. I was tempted this morning to use the Aramaic as our reference points. Uh, and it's always interesting to compare whatever Bible translation you are looking at back to the Aramaic and see how that evolved from what the original language was to the language that's being communicated to us today and, and tease out those, those differences. But in this, doesn't that sound a whole lot like unity principle number two? We are created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, we are divine beings. I always add, you know, sort of the little ellipsis, dot, 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 in potential. <laughs> in potential, because we have choice. We're choosing along the way. And, and so, but that potential resides within us, that potential for the perfect father, that potential for the perfect mother as a principle, as an idea, as a divine idea, that resides within all of us. Because we all are created not only, not only male and female as separate individual body forms and everything, but we both have those energies within us. That's the yin and yang of it, right? That I have masculine energy and I have feminine energy. And that as I'm working on my own process, the goal is to find the balance between those two and to walk owning with authority both of those energies, the masculine part of you and the feminine part of you. And when we talk about the penguins, we're going to be able to see how the father penguins actually take on some of those maternal roles in their, in their relationships and everything, and it's a perfect demonstration of that principle. So the next two scriptures I want to throw in here before we talk about penguins is uh, both these come from John in the, in the New Testament, and this is a famous one comes from John 10 30 the father and I are one right the father and I are one I was reminded this week as I was preparing for this talk oftentimes when Jesus spoke in parables and stuff like that he would say like this you know I'm saying the father and I are one that's that's what they say in the NRSV but there are also ones where it says I and the father are one right but oftentimes when Jesus was talking with another individual, he wouldn't say, my father. He would say to them, your father, reminding them that we share that same father. And if the father created everything, created us in the image and likeness, and created them male and female, then we have to get to a place, regardless of the word that's being used, get to a place at the level of divine mind, at the level of divine principle, that it's all, it's, it's all one thing. It's all one thing so that when we're being created in the image and likeness of, we're going to have those masculine tendencies, we're going to have those feminine tendencies as well. And once again, for me, the goal is to walk that balance, to find, to do what I need to do to be in balance with those energies within me. And I believe, it's my belief that as we walk in balance, owning both of those energies, that we become more productive people here on the planet. We become 
better fathers and better mothers and better friends and, and you know, all the way around the board because we're walking in a balanced way. So wherever we are on our path, that we're always kind of gyrating, kind of, you remember those little gyroscope bubbles, you know, they, they got that level of tolerance. They're just kind of bouncing around there in that level of tolerance, but if it swings way outside of that level of tolerance, it's out of balance. And it's the same thing for us. If, we're, if we swing way outside of our balance zone, then ultimately we got to moderate and get back to that center, get back to where we're, we're operating within that tolerance and we're operating within balance of our masculine and feminine tendencies. The second scripture here also comes from John, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. And we're also reminded that as we believe in these principles and everything, that our lives will be blessed and we will prosper. That as we move in alignment with those spiritual principles. So now let's talk about penguins. What does penguins have to do with all of this? I want to start by asking a question. Has anybody seen the movie The March of the Penguins? Raise your hand if you've seen it. Have you seen it more than once? Keep your hand up if you've seen it more than once. Have you seen it more than once in the last 36 hours? Oh, oh, just me? Just me? I highly encourage everyone, if you've seen it in the past, man, what a brilliant movie and it's narrated by God by the way y'all knew that y'all knew that Morgan Freeman is God y'all knew that right yeah it's like you know it's wonderful I, I I remembered when I when I dialed it up this week and and put it in my queue to watch it before today I remembered very fondly seeing the movie I think it came out in 2006 I think was when it came out somewhere around that ballpark and everybody was real you know high on it at the time I think it won the Academy Award that year for you know, best documentary and everything. And it's just an absolutely stunningly beautiful film. It's beautifully, beautifully filmed. It's just gorgeous to look at. Uh, I actually, as I was getting ready this morning, I actually pulled up the soundtrack, put it on Apple while I was, while I was getting ready this morning and just listened to the soundtrack because after I'd seen it twice in 36 hours, I was like, man, there's some really good music in here. So, you know, you can do that today too. You know, go to your streaming service and dial up March of the Penguins and just the soundtrack and just listen to that. Uh, but I highly encourage everybody to revisit it and revisit it in light of this talk here today in particular, especially the second time I was watching it this morning early uh, and I was preparing my notes and it was kind of on my iPad playing and I had my earbuds in and I'm listening to it and everything and I'm catching things that I didn't catch, you know, the first time that I saw it, uh, you know, 24 hours ago. And, uh, and it was just, it was just stunning. It was like thoughts would come into my, come into my mind about, well, what about this, you know? And then about five minutes later, you know, that little vignette would, would come up and remind me about how they handled that. So to sort of recap, uh, if you have, it's been a while since you've seen it. We probably generally remember what it's about, but the, the movie takes place. It starts right around in the month of March. And in the month of March, it's the, basically the end of what would be the equivalent of their summer. But it's, remember, it's like you know, South Pole kind of summer. So it's a much different kind of summer than, that we've got. But there comes a moment in time where the, the ice on top of the ocean has gotten slushy enough that you can punch holes through it. And so sometime in around the month of March, all of a sudden, all the penguins start coming out of the water. They've been underneath the water for like three months, feeding and playing and doing what they do. And now it's time for them to begin what is effectively a nine-month journey to give birth to the next generation of penguins. So as they come up out of the water onto land, they just kind of sit there in this spot until everybody's kind of there. The whole tribe has come out and they've gathered. And then once they've all gathered, then they begin the journey, which roughly equates to somewhere between 60 and 70 miles away from where they originated and they're just trudging across the snow night and day the food that they came with when they came up out of the water the food that they've got stored away that's all the food they're going to have for a few months and so they what they're doing is they're moving to a location their breeding ground that is far enough inland that there's a stability with the the frozen rock and they get to this breeding ground and when they get there, they begin to pair off. And the penguins, they practice serial 
monogamy. Serial monogamy. I learned what that meant. That means that they are monogamous to their partner for that season. And then the next season when they come back, they're joining up with a different partner for the next season. But for that nine months, they are for all intents and purposes just like we are as fathers and mothers when we're bringing a baby into the world and everything. They literally go through the same emotions. It's just amazing watching them, how they court, how they mate, how if they lose their egg, or even worse, the egg is born later and they lose it to other circumstances, there is a palpable grieving process. You will see them experience that loss. And it goes on and on and on. It's been going on this way for centuries. Even as we're here this morning in the sanctuary here in mid-June, that's about the time that the mothers are first laying the eggs. Right? They're first laying the eggs about this time. So that's going on right now, somewhere on another part of the planet. So hold that in consciousness. After the mothers lay the eggs, basically, okay, they've been out there a little over two months at this point in time. At some point in that process, right after they've laid the egg, they hand the egg off to the dad, to the father. And that's a trick. If y'all remember the movie, you'll, there's scenes where they're actually trying to pass the egg back and forth, and they can only pack, you pass it back and forth with their feet because they can't really bend over and pick it up and just hand it to somebody. So they're trying to pass it to their feet, and at some point in time, they lose it. It's there on the ice, and the father's got to get it and get it back up on his feet off of that ice pretty quickly because if the egg stays down there too long, your whole season is done. Your whole season is done. Your reproductive thing is done for the year, right? There's nothing else going to happen, so they protect that. And then the fathers then take on the responsibility for keeping that egg up on, on their feet and off of the ice for somewhere over two months, the next two months. When the mothers are relieved of that duty, they then begin the journey back to where they began. So they can go feed themselves again and get replenished because they've lost, they've lost quite a bit of their body weight at that point in time, and they need to go get replenished, right? So they go off, and the fathers stay there pretty much during the harshest part of the winter. And they huddle up, and all the fathers are keeping those eggs up off of the, the ice. That's like the archetype image. That's, that's the perfect image of that perfect father protector, that they do whatever is necessary to shield that egg during that. And the con conditions are just like, you and I wouldn't like it, I can just tell you that. <laughs> I mean, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't last five minutes out there with what they're going through, I'm telling you. It's, the temperatures are somewhere in the like minus 60, minus 70 degrees. The winds, there's almost no sunlight. It's almost all dark you know, during that point in time. And this goes on for a couple of months. And then ultimately, the mothers who have gone back to the feeding ground and replenished themselves, they then make that journey. Not, not, so now the mothers have made three journeys. They've gone 70 miles inland. They laid the egg, stayed with it for a couple of months, making the egg. And then they journey back 70 miles, replenish, and then they do a third trek back. Right? So that's three journeys for the mothers. So by the time they get back there, we're only about four months into the winter. We're, only about, we're not even halfway through the nine-month cycle at this point in time, right? And so the mothers come back, and they pass, the, they pass the egg back again, and the fathers then begin to make the journey back to feed themselves because by this point in time, they've gone four months without food. Four months without food. So for anybody who ever had that complaint about, you know, like, how easy it is, you know, for dads during the nine-month pregnancy and everything, and the moms take on all the work. This is a perfect example from nature where they're sharing that responsibility. So they don't really have that issue in the, in the penguin world, right? They don't have that little energetic partnership issue, right? They're both sharing that experience. Uh, once again, reminding you, under horrific circumstances, I mean, these are extreme circumstances that they are enduring, and they've been doing it for centuries. In terms of evolution, at some point in time, the penguins chose to stay there. 
They could have migrated somewhere else at an earlier part in the evolution and everything, but they chose to stay there. And this is a ritual they play out year after year. So now we're somewhere around four months into it, four, four and a half months into it, and somewhere along the way the baby chicks hatch. Okay? Now this becomes a whole nother journey. Right? This becomes a whole nother thing. The fathers are gone, the, the, you know, the chicks are hatching, the mothers are watching it while the fathers are gone replenishing. And now the chicks are out, but now you've got a whole other set of considerations because not only do the chicks have to be protected from the weather conditions, but there's also predators that start coming around and, thing, and things of this nature. So there's all kinds of ways that, there, that the, the population experiences attrition throughout this, throughout this season. Not all of them survive. And I'm not just talking about the chicks. Some of the Mothers and fathers on the journey there lag behind. If they lag behind, they get swallowed up by the, by the snow, by the ice, because they need that herd to stay protected, right? So if you lag behind, you're not even going to make it to the breeding ground. They also reminded me that, that many, many of the fathers on the way back after they protected the egg and they're on the way back to the feeding ground, they perish too because they've, you know, they've lost a third to, you know, or more of their body weight during that four months, and they don't have the strength to make the journey back. So every year during this birthing season, there are casualties every single year. This year will be no different. But it's, there, there's a divine intelligence going on here. There's a divine partnership going on here where there's an agreement between the mother penguins and the father penguins on the roles that are played. And that's just, that is staggering to me in the imagination when you actually just look and observe that and realize that there's a divine intelligence at work here. And that same divine intelligence that's at work there in the penguin community, it's operational here in our own consciousness as well. We're the one, we have this sort of this freedom of choice. They keep telling us that we have this freedom of choice I like to say that you're, you are free to choose, but you're not free to escape the consequences of the choices that you put into motion, right? You will, that, that, that's sort of the divine justice. Whatever choices you put into motion, you'll reap the benefits or rewards or penalties for choosing in that direction. And in this case, they're performing their roles perfectly. If a mother, there was, there was one scene in there that really, really touched me. Um, there was a mother who, who's, Chick was hatched, so the so the baby was the baby penguin was was alive, and the mother lost control of it and couldn't pick it back up, and it basically died there on the ice. It just they, they couldn't get him back into into protection in time. And in her grieving over this loss of her child, she tried to steal the chick of another penguin mother, like she tried to take the other mother penguin's baby away. But the herd, they all huddled around the mother whose chick it was, and they prevented that. They're, so he, there's, it's like, wow, man, they have worked all of this out in their social order over the course of time. And I'm thinking that's because that divine father and that divine mother principle is alive in them too. It's not just for us. Just because we have the words to articulate it and speak about it, it's not just for us. It's an operation in nature, which reminds me once again that that's what the purpose of this whole series of talks in June was, that Reverend Cherie was focused on us looking at what lessons we can learn from the animal kingdom. How can we look at that, observe that, and bring practical lessons into our own experience? And what I gleaned from, from this experience watching the penguins was that partnership, that divine partnership that the masculine and the feminine, the mothers and the fathers are demonstrating just in their breeding cycle, right? They basically have to stay out there another four, four and a half months after the babies are done while the season is thawing, thawing, thawing ultimately. Their journey finally back to the feeding ground after all that period is actually shorter than it was to begin with because as effectively their spring and summer approach, which is only about a three-month season and everything, things kind of start getting slushy again there on the ice and everything, and they basically, their journey back to the feeding ground 
is it, that's another fascinating scene in the movie watching that where the baby chicks are following the the adults back to the the feeding zone and then when the adults jump back into the water that's the last time they see their children the children don't really yet know what's going on they don't have that instinct to jump in so they basically just sit there on a on you know the equivalent of a floating ice island and and as that continues to to uh, evaporate and turn back into water that thing gets smaller and smaller and smaller but even while they're doing that they're continuing to grow a little bit more a little bit more and then finally there comes a day when they got no choice but to leave the slushy little ice island that they're on and they take that dive into the water and that begins their life cycle because the next year when it comes back around they'll be part of that journey back over there to the reproductive thing I highly, I highly encourage everyone to go. You can get it on Amazon Prime for like $2.99. And I'm telling you, it's the best $2.99 I've spent in a long time revisiting that movie in light of this, to like this, this theme that we've got going on here in June. What can we learn from the animal kingdom? Where That divine wisdom, what are they communicating to us? How can we learn from that experience to improve our own experience? And I promise you, there, like my mind was just pinging this morning as I was watching it and kind of making notes and everything. I was like, man, there are so many rabbit holes I could go down here today. I could talk about this and I could talk about that and everything. Like learning to just stay on course, which is why I think I started with those scriptures, was just give me a way into this. That we are all created in the image and likeness of that divine father principle. And that wrapped up in that divine principle, that divine father principle is the male and the female. In perfect partnership. In perfect partnership, the masculine and the feminine. And it really doesn't matter if we're in, you know, a, a male female relationship or a same sex relationship. There is still that energetic dynamic between the need for the masculine energy and the need for the feminine energy to provide balance to the relationship, however that shows up, because the energies are not about biological sex traits the energies are divine masculine and feminine and both are absolutely essential both neither one is better than the other both are absolutely essential so i want to encourage each one of us as we move through the week this week and maybe we can take this into meditation as well that whatever your experience was with your father and maybe even your mother i know today we're focused on father's day and we did mother's day back last month but that whole idea of parenting as well whatever your experience was good bad and different just in the next few minutes and, and through the course of the week and everything take that with you just own it just don't try to fade it don't try to fix it just accept it for what it was and take a look at what your part in that dynamic is and if there is Forgiveness work to be done, for example, if there is still forgiveness work. My, I didn't get to do my forgiveness work with my dad till after he was dead. And so I had to do that on my own. And writing that song, Strawberry Moon, was a big part of that process. I'm going to cry here if I keep talking about it too long. But it was, it's, a, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting thing when you're left with that unforgiveness still residing within you. And the party that you have the grievance with is no longer around for you to give voice to. Who did I go to? I went to the Divine Father. That the Divine, that Divine Father was still present for me. And that everything that I needed to communicate to my, to my own earthly dad that needed to be healed, that I still had a source that I could go to. And so wherever you are on the spectrum of all, all that kind of stuff, and there's no doubt that there's been some dads that have done some bad things in the world. I'm not trying to whitewash this at all there certainly are and what's also true is that it's incumbent upon me to do my own healing to do my own choosing to see the oneness for myself so i encourage you as we go through the week and as we go through the meditation to just look at your own experience suspend judgment just be neutral about it and just accept it for what it was what it is and allow that forgiveness to come through because on the other side of that is your personal peace and that is worth any price that you could ever pay to get to that place of peace so with that i'm gonna 
ask them to play a song, and we'll come back in a few minutes to uh, do a meditation, I think is the next thing on the agenda. So thank you all for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the penguin story.
So yes, let's take that into meditation. Orchestrate your symphony through me. I am your song. Let's hold that in consciousness as we center ourselves more deeply in this right here, right now moment. Take a moment or two just to focus on your breath and just allow yourself just to relax. Feel your heart space opening as you relax. Feel your mind, the activity of your thinking mind. Feel that relax. Just go into neutral. Just pause for a bit. This next few minutes is not about thinking at all. This next few minutes is about being still and listening for that voice of God, the voice of the Father, Mother Principle. It's with us everywhere we are under all circumstances. There is no need that we may have that is outside of the assistance of the Divine Father. It is the Father's great pleasure to give us the kingdom. It is ours to open up to that gift, open ourselves up to receiving that gift. And if there is anything that is blocking that flow, a grievance, an unforgiveness, resistance, whatever it is, just allow it to just park itself in neutral. Just let it fall by the side of the road. We have no need for such things as we come into communication with the Divine Father. We prepare ourselves for this time in the silence by pausing that thinking mind by neutralizing any resistance, any grievance, any obstacle in the way of that communication. We know these things are illusions anyway. They're not even real. So it's very easy for us to lay them aside and open ourselves up for that clear, clear channel of communication between us and the divine. All needs are answered. All questions are answered. All petitions or requests are waiting to be fulfilled. And so as we prepare ourselves for this time in the silence, we, we bring to mind anything that might be in the way of that clear communication with the Father, whether it's our earthly fathers who are still with us, whether our earthly fathers have already passed on, or we don't know where they're located, we know that in divine mind, there is only one mind. And so even in that seeming separation, that there is still communication when I come to the table with my own willingness to heal, to forgive, to clear those channels out so that all that remains is my own expression of love. And I allow that love to flow into my relationship with my father not only my earthly father, but also my divine father. And even as I do so, I do so in the knowledge and the awareness that I am also blessing the divine mother in that same blessing, in that same expression of love, that divine partnership, that dance of energies and polarities between the masculine and feminine all residing within me. And I am so willing to caretake that with love. I'm so willing to caretake that with forgiveness and empathy and compassion so that I can move myself into that place of balance, into that place of peace where the expression of love naturally flows through me and touches every single relationship in my own life. So whatever that is for you, whatever helps you to move into that space, call upon it now. And 
take that with you into the silence. Back into the sanctuary. We do so in the knowledge that this brief moment that we spent willingly being in the presence of the oneness, willingly being in the presence of the divine, that potential is there for us at any time of the day, any day of the week. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever we are, the Father is. Wherever we are, the Mother is. And that divine intelligence is always, always, always available to us. The best strategy to get in connection with that, to get in communication with that is just simply be still and know. Be still and know that you are even now in the midst of the one power, the one presence, the divine father, the creator of all, including our own selves. And we are created in the image and likeness of that divine. And so we too are divine beings. And so we say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, living, loving spirit. Thank you, divine mother, for giving me this life, giving me this opportunity to connect with and communicate with the divine. There are so many blessings that or the consequence and effect of that communication, the effect of that relationship. And for all of that, and even so much more that we can't even name, we are ever, ever so grateful. And so once again, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We pray all of these things and more in the name and the nature of Jesus, the indwelling Christ presence. And so it is. So we allow it to be. Amen. There's another awesome penguin movie called Happy Feet. <laughs> Look that one up on your Netflix queue. But the reason I bring that up is because it's the same theme of a tribe and the same thing of family, but there's also this theme of togetherness. And one of the songs from that show, which was written by Prince, which makes it even better for me, is the lyrics go, we can be together if we all do our part. I'll let you, if you let me, sing the song of my heart. We can be together if we all do our part. I'll let you, if you let me, sing the song of our heart. One world singing a song together, the song of our heart. So as our penguin pride of Unity Church of the Hills continues to move our flock forward, we are going to do so singing the song of our heart. And in doing that, it is now time to help our flock move across the ice by giving of the offering. Amen. So as the ushers come forward, there is a way that you can give your Pringwin pride through your pockets, and you can do so either with a check, or you can do so online. You can do it on the app. You can give cash here right now. We accept money that folds, money that jingles, and the kind that we don't know if it's real or not, called crypto. But keep giving so this pride can continue to flourish and not fall off the ice. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So now that we have that pride penguin energy, let us say our affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I circulate, and I am grateful. Penguin on, people, penguin on. <laughs> Yo 
celebration once again let's uh let's open our hearts up there for a minute just let's bless this offering and just uh see ourselves participating in that divine law of circulation that divine law that promises that we cannot outgive god that even as we give we open ourselves up to receive in abundance 10 times and more pressed down and overflowing from what our gift is so we gladly lovingly give these gifts into this community and we see these gifts moving through the community here at unity church of the hills doing its absolute best divine example of love and circulation and we are proud and happy and so so grateful to be part of this process and so we say thank you thank you thank you god for all of your abundance for all of your prosperity we open ourselves up to receive more so that we can give more. We pray all of this and more in the name and the nature of Jesus, the indwelling Christ. And so it is, and so we allow it to be. Amen. <laughs> okay, this time I'm going to follow the script, you guys. Praying chaplains. Connect with a praying chaplain for one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one prayer following service in the chapel. Or online, congregants can, uh, can call the number that's on your screen and a chaplain will call you back. Thank you, and thank you to all of our praying chaplains for your support. Karaoke and potluck lunch. Join us, yes, come on now. Join us on July the 3rd, I think that's a Sunday, but you guys check the calendars. July the 3rd at 1.30 for our karaoke and potluck event. Lift up your voices and your plates as we gather together for food, fun, and musical entertainment, provided by you. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking for a tech-savvy volunteer to operate the karaoke machine, so 
If you are interested or know someone who is, um, please contact Linda Hancock, our volunteer coordinator. Visit unityhillschurchcenter.com slash registration slash events to register. I'm sure if you go to unityhills.org, it will show you, you'll be able to find that place through that, uh, that website. There is a new person's reception and board gathering every third Sunday, which I believe today is, we will have an opportunity. You will have an opportunity to mingle and connect with our new with our newcomers, um, our community members, and uh, members of our board. We encourage everyone to join us on this on the patio, especially those of you uh, new to the community. Everyone is welcome. Stop by and say hello, and give us an opportunity to get to know you. Lit, uh, light refreshments will be served. Turning over the page. Um, Sunday, uh, June 26th, um, this uh, coming Sunday is the culmination of our theme, Spiritual Lessons from Animals. Join Rev. Cherie Taylor-Jones as she celebrates the gifts of unconditional love we received from humanity's best friends, dogs. Is there a picture of a doggy up there? Yeah, look at that, coordinating. Um, at our 1125 service, we honor the miracle of the animal kingdom. So it's, it's uh, time for us to bid fond farewell to the people who have uh, shared online service with us. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you uh, in person one day, but if not, we'll take you however we can get you. We love you, <laughs> and we will see you next time. Thank you. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you, God.